Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Books You Can Sink Your Teeth Into podcast, and we are glad to be back. I know it's been a few weeks. Um, it's actually been three weeks. I actually did a pre-recording uh, before, but we uh, had COVID, had my son's wedding, and uh, so it just was a busy, busy uh, time. The, the COVID really knocked me on my butt, and then, uh, so I apologize for... Um, not being able to record last week, but we're back. And so everybody will be here. Got uh, Hanshin Hank. He'll be reviewing uh, Harry Potter, book number two. <laughs> Get him back on track. Uh, Charlie Cleanwell will be coming to us from the Death Star. And of course, Count Vlad, who's just all over the world, um, will be reporting on the wedding. <laughs> he was there. <laughs> and uh, all the other good stuff that he's got going on. So... Uh, Thanks for joining, and it's good that you're here. So, we are going to review a book that has just been recently released. It is called, well, it's part two in the series of Dead Adrenaline, and it's called Time Break Expedition, okay? Uh, The Return, Dead Adrenaline 2. Look at this cover, really nice. Um, And it is book two of the original, which was, Dead Adrenaline. <laughs> so we got Dead. Whoops. Please on the other side. We have Dead Adrenaline, and then we have the follow-up, Time Break Exhibition, The Return, Dead Adrenaline Two. So it's uh, it really is a nice book. It 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 follows. It it takes off right the, from the end of Dead Adrenaline, and uh, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I've read it. Uh, well, actually, this is gonna be. I'm reading it for the third time. Uh, the author let me proof it, and then he sent me a, you know, right when he was done, he sent me a copy, and then uh, I got, you know, I got my own copies here. And this third time I'm reading it, I'm, I'm kind of reading it for enjoyment, right? I'm reading it for pleasure. I'm not trying to speed through it or try to edit it or anything. And i um, got to tell you, it's a, it's a good story. Uh, it's fun. So he mixes in, there's time travel, got science fiction. And it really is. It does a good job with the time travel because it's like every time when you're reading it, you think, I gotcha. Nope. He's he's got you covered. So, um, yeah, really, really fun. And, you know, it's about, I'm not going to, I won't spoil it, but uh, it is about uh, like a zombie. So if you're into zombies, you're going to like this. A little different, though. It's um, alien-created zombies. And so... Uh, and now this this go around, they are. Uh, it's a little different this go around. So they're smarter. They're uh, yeah yeah. So um, anyway, uh, the man called Clint Star comes back to uh, the to the present. Well, basically twenty twenty six. But and uh, this time he brings a team with him to try to stop uh, the evil hive queen from going forward with their plans and there's lots and lots of fun and excitement and uh, cars and old old antique cars and uh, lots of lots of um, what is it fighting scenes and and whatnot so uh, it, truly enjoyable uh, the author as far from what I understand was at a I think it was a wine uh, tasting uh, outdoor thing happening in Beaver County uh, last night so he had a booth and he actually got to read a little bit from the book and apparently it was a huge success he said there's people were stopping by and talking to him and you know selling books on the spot there and so uh, really really nice to hear uh, the success and like I said it's a it's an enjoyable book so uh, definitely would recommend and oh yeah here's the other thing he's got pictures in this one and so uh, when you're looking at it You've got like you know I'm just gonna say, like, these are these are some of the cars the antique cars whoa <laughs> guess some okay well I guess the system didn't like those antique cars <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna edit that that was kind of fun I think there was a there was a DA zombie pushing my laptop over <laughs> oh no I see what it is Sherlock uh, Sherlock got up and bumped, uh, bumped my recording stuff. So, okay, Sherlock. Yeah, now he's now he's laying back down. So, right, so my pug. 
Uh, anyway, back to the book. Um, yeah, so there was uh, anti-car. Oh, anyway, it's like like I said, it's a good book. Hope that you uh, get it. It's on Kindle, on Amazon. I have the link in the bottom. So uh, thank you all very much uh, for listening and for watching. We are now going to switch over to Han Sheen Hank. Take care, everyone. Hello everyone, Han Sheen Hank here, and uh, as you can tell, I'm no longer in a stadium. I've been told that uh, nobody wants to hear about Japanese baseball, and nobody wants to hear about cricket, and so stick to the Harry Potter books, Han Sheen. Well, all I gotta say about that is okay. Sure, I'll I'll stick to the Han. I'll stick to the Harry Potter books, but if you watch the new anime of Ultraman. Okay, uh, it's a new anime, Ultraman. I forget, it's on Netflix somewhere. His Ultraman's mom is a Hanshin Tigers fan. That's right, and she has a hat. And she actually sings the Hanshin Tiger fight song. So there you go. All you naysayers who say nobody cares about Hanshin, nobody cares about Japanese, there you go. <laughs> anyway, uh, just a couple. <laughs> I promised that I wasn't going to say anything about sports, but I heard a guy, you got to get a couple things off my chest. Team USA, it's painful to watch. You know, you're a good team. you got a good coach. Can you guys just start playing like men? I swear, I feel like we should take all those soccer players and make them play hockey for two years and then put them back out on the soccer pitch because they need to toughen up. Um, uh, un unreal losing to Panama. Panama. Really? Anyway, oh, enough about that. It's so frustrating. Uh, second is uh, Team Italy. Uh, what's going on? Uh, are you guys like watching USA and trying to imitate them? Italy lost to Switzerland to nothing, and they got they got beat bad. At least they made it to the round of sixteen in the um, European uh, Championship. But oh, for goodness sakes, come on, Italy! Best team in the freaking world, and you're playing well. Like I said, you're much. You must be watching the how. You must be studying U.S. U.S. Team USA tapes because, uh, yeah, you're really stinking it up. So, okay, enough about sports. I just need to get that off my chest. All right, <laughs> all right. So, let's get to Harry Potter, book number two, Chamber of Secrets. So, uh, this book was um, not. It was a, not a bad follow up, actually. Uh, it had some questionable parts in it. So just a kind of a recap. This is where Harry runs afoul. He was in the summertime. He's at the Dursleys. He's accused of doing, uh, it wasn't him, it was that little house elf, but they accused Harry of doing the magic, the Ministry of Magic did, that is. And, and Harry was, you know, had to be saved by Ron Weasley and his brothers in that uh, car. And they uh, took him over to the Weasley's house. Anyway, they got him all prepared for school and lots of adventures uh, happening, getting him to school. Uh, but, but really, it was the Chamber of Secrets. And so the heir of Slytherin uh, was supposed to come back. And there's this big snake behind the walls that's, it's, uh, you know, like, kind of like a Gorgon. Anybody who sees it turns to stone. And so um, people are just, you know, people are turning to stone left and right and uh, Harry's the only one who can hear it, and Harry decides, well, I'm not, I don't trust Dumbledore. I'm not going to tell him anything I know. <laughs> so it's just like a really, really, you got the principal, the best, the, top, the strongest wizard in the world on your side. You're not going to tell him. Anyway, I, 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 that bothered me. That bothered me. But because uh, it wasn't very realistic. But anyway, um, J.K. Rowling said that she struggled with this book because of the success of the Philosopher's Stone, the first book, and she didn't feel that uh, she was going to be able to, you know, replicate, uh, you know, a follow-up that was going to be as good. Understand. I understand that. You know, um, you know, author Clint Kurtika of Dead Adrenaline, uh, he had no issue with his second book. He, I mean, he just was on fire you know, and it just came to him. Um, myself, I'm not struggling with my follow-up to my murder mysteries with Shiokawa. Uh, it's really, for me, it's time. That's what's uh, delaying me a bit. But 
J.K. Rowling was, well, now of course, <laughs> you know, it's different when you're selling, you know, 10 books and five books versus, you know, uh, 10,000. So <laughs> a little bit different pressure there. But she said that she had trouble uh, with the with the second book. And I, I get that. She wanted it to, you know, be. So she took it back after submitting it to the publisher and worked on it for six additional weeks by it. I think that, um, like, uh, yeah, like I said, thoroughly enjoyable. Now, it finally all comes to a climax where, you know, Harry and Ron and one professor, uh, they finally found the chamber and they, you know, they find Ginny who had been corresponding with the diary that was given to her by Draco Malfoy's dad and, you know, this, this diary was one of the horcruxes that, you know, had Lord Voldemort's, um, you know, part of his soul in. And, uh, you know, she was, uh, anyway, the, his name was, uh, the, the part of the soul was named Tom Riddle. And then he came out and then, you know, him and Harry had a big fight and Harry won, of course. And luckily for Harry, the phoenix arrived just on the nick of time. So, you know. Kind of, uh, I, I, absolutely a nice, clever save for uh, which I which I did enjoy. Um, but again, Lockhart. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Not real believable as a character. Harry, keep and anyway. There's some criticisms that I definitely had, but all in all. A good book, and I definitely would would say, yeah, this was, it, it, was, it was, I think it was, it was, it was a little tighter than the Philosopher's Stone. So, anyway, that was my review of Harry Potter book number two, Chamber of Secrets, and I'll be back next week. We'll take on Harry Potter's book number three. Until then, have a great week, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Everybody from the Death Star, this is Charlie Cleanwell here. Coming to you from the Death Star. I am really happy to see you. So much going on. I've uh, been kind of lonely up here uh, on the Death Star. And uh, we have big news, of course. As you know, the Batman, he uh, saved the day with Baby Yoda. And uh, Emperor is happy as a clam, but poor Darth uh, is now just kind of been cast away. So Darth Vader uh, just sitting in his uh, regeneration egg and just, you know, well, he wrote a song. Uh, he wants me to play it for you. I'm going to go ahead and play it in a little bit. But uh, honestly, he, he's just lost his marbles. The Batman is the man now strutting around. Um just, you know, everywhere you go, you just see him and he's uh, always talks in the third person, right? You know, the Batman. And so anyway, uh, that's the big news from up here. So we got a new number two, the Batman. Now, uh, I wanted to just mention that on the Disney Channel, uh, they have a couple new shows, a couple new shows. And one is called The Acolyte. The Acolyte. And I got to tell you, I watched it. I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. So if you got the Disney Channel, definitely uh, take a look at that. Um, it's a really interesting take on things. And I think you're going to like it. Um, so, uh, yeah. So with that said, let's get to the song. All right. Just a shout out um, to our jazz playing friend who... Uh, is right now in Nashville, Tennessee, recording. So we are excited, and uh, actually, when uh, if we get a couple of his uh, of his tracks, we'll definitely uh, play some for you or put them or make them available here on the website. So hopefully, and you know what? Maybe Darth Vader's song might give you some inspiration for your for your trip and your recording. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> anyway. This was written by Darth, um, and uh, it's called I Pad Me Alone. I 
I pat me alone. Yeah, with nobody else. I pat me alone. I prefer to be by myself. We may have to edit that for the younger ones. <laughs> yeah, the, the emperor don't give up on me. Makes me feel oh so sad. The only one who will hang out with me is my dear friend, Charlie Cleanwell. Okay, all right, now, now, now. All right, I'm just singing what Darth wrote. And I pat me alone. <laughs> Yeah, okay. This is actually borderline. Uh, yeah, but it's, uh, I'm going to have to tell Darth. Uh, to, uh, I'm going to have to review Darth's lyrics now before uh, before we do that again. Jeez, oh whiz. So, um, yeah. Uh, every, anyway, um, this is Charlie Cleanwell. Good to see you all. And we'll um, see you all again next next time. Bye. Good evening, everyone. It is me, Count of Vlad, and I am here to say hello. I'm back at my castle, my beautiful, beautiful castle. <laughs> yes, it's a beautiful night. It's raining and the thunder, and you know that's exactly how Count of Vlad likes it. So, I hope you're all doing well. I'm very tired. My wings are so tired. I'm flying so far away. I flew all the way to the pizza bug. Yes, the pizza bug. Where I saw uh, Aunt Dottie, who gave me relationship advice. Yes, and it was great relationship advice. I wrote it all down. And I cannot wait to... Uh, start enacting it because my queen, Queen Lilith, she's coming back. Yes, yes, so it was all a big misunderstanding with the Count Fangora. You see, it was it was a Queen Lilith's apprentice, Lina, who was the one who liked the Count Fangora. And they're the ones who ran off and the Queen Lilith was uh, chasing after. So she's on her way back. And she says that she has lots of soiled clothes that I have to clean when she gets back immediately. So I am really looking forward to doing that for her. So, but anyway, I was up in Pittsburgh and I got to meet Aunt Dottie, who I think is now my favorite aunt. Yeah, she is my favorite aunt. Um, she gave me such good advice. And, you know, I'm going to try to make Queen... Uh, Lilith jealous, yes. So when she comes back, I am going to try to make her jealous so that she loves me more. You're right, that's what the girls want. That's what Aunt Dottie says. The girls love that, to be made jealous. So I'm going to try and do that. Uh, in other news, when I was up there in Pittsburgh, I actually found, I met some people who watched the show. So hello, all my new friends who who made comments to me. They loved the singing. Uh, they loved the count. They actually wanted the count to come out at the wedding and dance. The count was very tempted, but unfortunately, there are too many humans there, and I probably would have been drinking some blood and uh, could, <laughs> couldn't have gotten away with that. So uh, I went, oh, hold on a second. Hold on. Get, get away. Get away. Get away. Count Fangora. He flew up here with me to my castle. And it's a real castle, by the way. It's real. And anyway, he's flying around as a bat. Shoot. Shoot. He wants to be on the show in the worst way. Shoot. Count Fangora. Shoot. Okay, he flew away. He wants to be on the show in the worst way. <laughs> so he flew up before Lilith and Lena came and 
Uh, so he will be here. But anyway, made lots of new friends. So hello to all my uh, new friends in Pittsburgh. I was uh, also, uh, we went to the wedding. Right, it was very nice. I had to hide because it was in a church. So I had to go up on the top where no one could see the count. And um had to be wary because they could splash the holy water on me, which is not the good. Um, <laughs> so, uh, okay, where's the count going? So, but now I'm back. I am back. And we are going to have uh, uh, a little bit of a talk now about who are my two favorite vampires in the whole world. Well, uh, my most favorite vampire, of course, is Bela Lugosi. He is my favorite, by far and away. Uh, I love his movies. Uh, I wish the Count, I wish I, the Count Vlad, could be in the movies. I think I'd be a big star, you know, got good hair and everything. <coughs> My second favorite vampire is Grandpa from the Monsters. Yes, you know, he's a really, really good vampire. Because not only is he a vampire, but he can do the magic. He does the magic, that's right. He go poof. He can do potions and a magic spell. So he's a real, real, real true vampire, in my opinion. I really like to count. Uh, count, well, Bela Lugosi, right? I count like a, the Count Dracula, played by Bela Lugosi. And I love Grandpa of the Monsters. So, all right, everyone. This is the show for this week. Uh, we don't have any calls uh, this week, so unfortunately. But uh, maybe next week we will. And uh, I will hope to have next week, I'm going to try to get a grandpa clip that we can all watch together and enjoy the uh, great vampire that grandpa was. Until next week then, my friends. Adieu.